Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2019 Stage Racer episode number 67. Wow, 67. That's a lot. <laughs> We're on to stage 15 at the Giro d'Italia. It's time trial day. It's pretty short though. It's only 10.8 kilometers, but it's a it's a hefty little climb. The climb itself, 8.9 kilometers at an 8.4% average gradient. And the max is 11.6. So your time trial rating only matters for the first two kilometers. 2K on the flat. And then it's a climb. So it's going to come down to your mountain rating. Way more than anything else. Now I have an excellent mountain rating. It's so low, so other things don't play as big of a role here. It's so low pacing yourself. And then the time trial part, well, I'm pretty good there too, so I'll get a little advantage. I should, should be able to put in a pretty good time for this. But the only unfortunate thing is because most of it is just straight up climbing, who's going to do best on the stage? Well the climbers and were already placed well so that that's that's gonna hurt we're gonna have similar times there's not gonna be a big gap between us there's gonna be a big gap between us and sprinters but Carapaz is gonna put in an excellent time Lopez is gonna put in an excellent time so these guys who aren't normally good in the time trial uh, they'll be able to get away with this one because it's just purely a climb. And if I understand the coding for this game correctly, and you can see it here, time trial, not even rated, not even rated. It's mountain hill resistance. That's it. Mountain hill resistance. So... That's what they're placing this on, which is what I thought. The, the way the coding is set for this one. Your time trial rating replaces your flat rating. Your prologue and your time trial mix depending on the distance. This is a short distance. So actually, there's a lot of prologue more so than time trial for that 2K because it's only 11K in total length. So... Again, going back to this, as we'll speed through everyone, 155 riders go, it might actually take a little while, uh, might be cause to move ahead, but whatever. Some of you have seen the tutorial that I've done for this game, uh, some have not, and that's fine. For, for those who have not specifically, uh, great information and great refresher for those who have seen the tutorial. On a time trial stage, instead of using your flat rating, which is your speed that you go when operating between, oh gosh, now I'm drawing a blank, four? It's four, right? Three. Three percent gradient, plus or minus. So... Anything between negative three and positive three. That will use your flat rating. Minus three goes to downhill. Positive three then goes to either mountain or hills rating. So your flat rating is between that plus minus three percent gradient. It's how fast you go over that terrain. So the higher the flat rating, the quicker you are on the flat. That then takes partial account into how you do in the sprint, but the sprint, that part, different rating. So you could be slow on the flat and still be quick on the sprint. When you are on a time trial or prologue, whether it's team or individual, your flat rating is replaced for that stage by your 
time trial or prologue rating. Now your time trial or prologue is based off of prologue being 100% under 5k, time trial being 100% over 30k, and depending on how close you are to one or the other is a percentage breakdown of a mixture of the two for everything between 5k and 30k meaning at 17 and a half K you are exactly halfway in between the five and 30 marks. And therefore you are split dead even between your prologue and your time trial rating. As we set off time to go, we're going to try 76, but I don't know if this is going to hold and it looks like it's a, probably a little strong, but it's a good takeoff. It's one advantage I have. I've got a 79 and or 81. So, I'm about a 79.5-ish rating, so you can see we're almost at 11K, right? It's almost all prologue. Okay, we are going better than we need to be. We're up to 9% on the gradient, so we're now fully. So here's the, the other piece of that as I continue pushing towards the end. the Once you get above that plus 3 or minus 3, you revert instead of to using that time trial, you revert to using your mountain or hills rating. The difference between mountain and hills is your effort level. Under 85 is 100% mountain. Over 95 is 100% hill. And between the 85-95 mark as we go quickest there, but I'm starting to run out of energy a little bit. Using up a little more than I can. <clears throat> the 85, 85 to 95 is just like the time trial prologue, it's divided in there. So again, Halfway right down the middle is 90, which would mean you would evenly use your mountain and hill rating. So if I were going 90, I would be 85 and 83, meaning I would be an 84 on that particular day, if at that effort level, at 90 pace. Now, the higher the gradient, the more it does have an impact on the speed of everyone, but your rating compared to that is, is what that comes down to. And we are going too strong. We need to back off here. Uh, 1.8K to go. I'm one second off the pace of Tom de Moulin. Of course, he was able to get a good start because of the 2K on the flat. He ended up with an excellent time there as a great time trialist. Uh, and Prologue, I don't know so much, uh, but obviously the climbing. Oh no, I've run out of energy. Oh, almost a full K from the end. I'm going to lose a ton of time here. Uh, as we're already down, we need to go 99. I ran out of energy way too soon. Did not time that right. And too much time talking. Otherwise I could have caught that, should have caught that. I'm going to lose a bunch of time. I will not be, yeah, I slipped to 13th. Minute five off the pace. Not a good time. I, I lost probably a minute and a half there. I should have gone fastest. I should have been faster than Carapaz or about the same time as Carapaz. So at least a minute five was lost. Lopez Moss up in the top three. Roglic is fifth. Gegenhardt seventh. So I'm losing time to all of them. Dumoulin behind Carapaz. Carapaz has the highest climbing rating of anyone here. He came out with the win by one second. Yeah, not good. That running out of energy hurts you a ton. And I was paying closer attention to what I was doing as opposed to giving you the analysis of how it works, how it's broken down. I wouldn't have made that mistake. That was a definite mistake. That is my bad. How much time that cost me? Well, about a minute. Teammate requests. Mm. You know what? I don't even have the teammates, so never mind. 
Never mind, we'll just move on. Late stages here, I was in fifth place. I was hoping time trial would have moved me in, but that was not a regular time trial. So as we go into stage 16, I'm still in fifth, so that's good. Uh, I, didn't, I screwed it up, but I didn't screw it up that bad. And it's another climbing stage. I'm surprised this is classified as a climbing stage. There's only two climbs. That's 15k, but it's early in the stage. This one, just 8.7. So, uh, again, kind of surprised. That, at the Tudor Fronts, that's very much a hills st stage. Very much a hills stage. In fact, it's damn near a sprint stage. <laughs> so I shouldn't have too much trouble navigating this one. Big climb, though, is fairly early in the day, so I suppose... We are just going to keep trucking right along with the episode. Uh, no reason to cut at this point because we'd be cutting back pretty early in the stage. I am among the favorites for the day, but again, I don't really have too much faith in what they're rolling out here. And especially the second climb is still pretty far from the finish. We still have a full 11 kilometers to go after. The climb is done. Of course, there's still another good one and a half, two k before we actually top out. It just levels off a bit, and then we descend, and then we climb again. That might do more damage than the climb itself. That secondary climb at the end. I I don't think this is going to be that intense. It's not that short of a stage, hundred and thirty k. So I would imagine the first climb will very much be your atypical slow pace. There you go. So I just noticed from the times to move on, his lead is two minutes. I'm three and a half behind. Top three on the stage, yeah. Still no impact overall from position, there you go, and we'll speed things up repeatedly again and again because all the attacks will slow us back down. And let's go ahead and go to the overhead or see the guys up front for a little bit, that's fine, we can see them. Unfortunately the motorbike is constantly <laughs> popping up into our view instead of just taking the view from the motorbike. Oof, 27 riders, what? You know, you do see breakaways get to that size, but not on stages like this. It's, it's late in the Giro, I suppose. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, zero race take edition, but really good fitness. Pays off for us. Let's go ahead and go back to the peloton. And we're already approaching that climb. This is why there was no point doing some sort of cut through the first sprint point. Salvo still leads that. Ernesto Gustavo Ernesto Del Mar. And here we go. 15k roughly. 1400 meters roughly. 6.5%. And some pace, surprisingly. Killing out the back. Mezgetch out the back. Jakobsen out the back. Scottson drifting, Zolo drifting, Schultz and Gentin are all that's left, and I struggling near the top. An in the group. So Peloton down to just 34 riders, and we are catching up to all sorts of guys out there. I will definitely make it to the top. Schultz does get over the top with us. Give him time to recover. The riders must be careful. I'm going to be the one to go get the water while he recovers. Small group, 54. I've got water. Get it back to Schultz. And then he'll protect me. There we go. And now we shift duties. Alright, so 54 in the peloton. And there's still all sorts of riders away. There are 10 here plus two more groups. So there's at least a dozen still in front of us. 
circle back one more. So there are 13 plus at least one more out front. Uron in the breakaway. Hamilton in the breakaway. Bilbao, Caruso, Frank Franchini, Meyer, Tollhook. That's that's a lot. Dan Martin. That's a lot of good riders. But here we are approaching that final climb. Now, it shouldn't have been anything, but because a rare show of force from some team, they attacked that first climb and destroyed most of the field. So now I'm down to just Schultz, who will make sure he uh, trans transcends himself for us at the early stages of that climb. He and I are both at full strength, but that does make things interesting heading into this last climb. Okay, we caught up to that big group. Uh, just the two groups remain. Uran, Martin, Tolhook, that group still remains. We are three minutes behind them, so we won't catch them. But as we approach the climb, I'm going to pause real quick. We still have Chicone, Quintana in the break, Higita. These guys are going to gain a ton of time, and that's a really strong group. I mean, we're looking at, I'd say, five of the seven are excellent climbers. Oh, and let's rephrase that. Really good climbers. And then Katana is excellent, but four really good climbers. And then you've got Uran, who uh, we can't call him excellent. Let's say really good climber, but probably better than those other guys. Surprise, he got dropped. And again, both groups really strong. So I don't think we're going to catch either group. We might catch Slagle, and that might be the only one we catch. Or maybe Ardia or Cataneo, if they get dropped early, maybe we catch them. But we turn onto the base of the climb 8.7 kilometers, just under a K of climbing in that span is 8.2%. Let's bring it home. Oh. Let's bring it home to me, not Schultz. There we go. And Schultz, you should be in front of me. Let's open that pathway so you can get through. You wasted some energy there. Again, we need to make sure he's ready to transcend himself as he fades. Seven and a half K to go. Now seven left to climb. Gap's coming down in front. They're not coming down that fast. It's Reichenbach at the front leading. And Schultz Transcend is going to have to come here relatively soon. We're down to 6k now. It'd certainly be nice if he can get us within the last about 2k before he's done and I think it's just about time to use the transcend see his red bar went back up a little bit and is holding steady now we're down to 59 so we've already lost quite a few guys four and a half K now but again I was hoping Schultz would make it a bit further than this 4k I wanted two or two and a half. Looks like we're gonna get to close to three. Maybe just three. No, not quite. Not quite. There you go. Here's the fade right at three. That's not too far off from where I wanted him to go, but 3k on my own is not gonna be easy here. Eighty-five. Okay, now we're down to 2k, and here comes Martin. There's Schlegel, who I thought I might catch. Tolhook, Uran hanging on in front of us. Schultz not dropped from the group just yet, actually. 1.5k to go, and we're starting to see an acceleration. Soler, Lopez, 1.2 from the top. Carapaz, Gegenhart. Okay, the other contenders are attacking. 400 meters. And we're good. We're good. 30 riders still here. 
and we're going to use our gel here in just a moment. We want it to kick in for the final part of the climb. Nine and a half K to go. The secondary climb is what we're saving it for. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. You're pushing too hard. Pushing too hard. Pushing too hard. Ah, uh, dang it. I wanted to recover a little bit over the top. We're down to 160. Down to 12 in the group. We just shattered the group on that last secondary part of the initial climb. There we go. Gel kicking in and my recovery is kicking in, but only slightly. Is that enough recovery? With the gel? I'm going to step this back up. Okay, we're up to 19 now. Still have the 7 off the front. They've only dropped one rider, which is... David A. Formolo. I'm surprised it was him before Cataneo or Ardia, or even Higita for that matter. We are 3.5k away, and here comes a big acceleration. Uh, it's Moss. I gotta let him go. I'm, I'm not following anybody. Not like this. So Moss gets away. Back off, back off, back off. We want to just hang on here. 2k. Mulan's away. That's Formolo. We're coming back at. There we go. We're coming up over the top. Coming up over the top. We're going to make it over the top. We lost two riders. We lost two riders, but nobody else. Oops. 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 A little too strong. A little too early. Just don't lose time. Don't lose time. This should be same time. I sure hope it is. They're crossing at 1.30. Can we get the same time, or am I going to lose a couple seconds because I freaking accelerated? <laughs> Hopefully not. I might have lost 30 seconds there. Wow, and Schultz is six minutes back now. 17th on the stage. That's basically 10th on the stage, but again, I should be maybe with the group. I don't know, I might have lost it the last 300 meters. I was just trying to hang on, but I, I I, thought I was closer than I was. I thought I was about to hit the line, so I accelerated. Oops. And here are a few of the key moments. Oh, I did lose... I lost time, and guys behind me were given the same time as me, even though Haig and I were all alone. Haig and I were totally alone, and I lost 20 seconds. Yeah. Man, I, I'm two for two on mistakes today. That's what I get for feeling better, see? See, this is how things work. I, I feel terrible, and apparently do well, as I had pneumonia. Now that I'm almost recovered, you know, 96, 97% now. And now we start making mistakes? Ugh, I'm being careless. I'm actually, I'm, I'm rushing because my wife asked for some help and I'm trying to get through this episode quickly and wrap up the day and I'm posting this in the morning. So I have excuses. They're bad ones. They're really bad ones. Dubulon in the lead, Moss two and a half behind, Roglic, and then Bennard still there. And I'm slipping back a little. Jack Haig, who was with me, I didn't lose any time to him. Lopez, 548, Bilbao. Bilbao here because of breakaway successes. Gegenhart. Another bad result, but fifth place overall is still good. It's still good, even though I've made two mistakes. And I'm just starting to kick off my push towards a fitness peak, which is happening nowhere near the, the end of the Giro. We're going to be well, well past it. Stage 17. Okay, quick sim. We're getting into the later stages here. Jakobsen took 16th. Another breakaway win. Upsetting for the uh, sprinters to have that happen. This race seems to be getting out of control. All right. 
right, all right. How are we looking? How are we looking? Four days left in the Jiro. Cobble? Where is there a cobbled section? I don't see anything in the profile that says that there are any cobbles. And one little punchy climb. One sharp little punch at the end, but that's this is gonna be mostly a sprinter day, right? Well, 4.8, 10% at that pace that late, 20k from the end. No, a lot of the sprinters are gonna be left behind. There might be a few. I, I'm not even going off of who's in this field, but I would say the type of rider that can get over that sprinter-wise, Caleb Ewan, Peter Sagan. Those guys would still be there. Viviani? <laughs> yeah, goodbye. Gaviria? <laughs> no, no freaking way. Right? Those couple guys, they could handle it. They could get over the top. Uh, somebody who could get over the top and then has some speed? Van Aert? Right? Uh, that's, that's somebody. Uh, Alaphilippe would absolutely get over the top and then be able to go and and win to win a sprint against most everyone else uh, but with our last few stages here there is not much left 18 19 20 really to focus on big climb for 19 big climbing day for 20 so two big stages to come and then 21 on the flat no big deal but for this, I, I, we don't want to sit through this. So I'll start next episode basically right before that climb. Get through that, and then we power through two big stages to finish up the Giro to tell you. That's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Sorry about how this one was a little bit shorter than normal, but I am finally getting caught up on rec on recordings. and uh, It's nice to be there. I'm actually almost done with this week, but I had not... I haven't touched this series for a little while, so got some work to do on that front. But uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye for now.